Are you having trouble with your slicer settings? Well, this guide is for you. If you're new to 3D printing or maybe even you've got a new 3D printer and it needs a good slicing profile, well this video, it should be quite helpful for you. Slicing software has a myriad of options and at first they're extremely confusing. This video is going to concentrate on some fundamentals and that is speed, flow rate, retraction and temperature. I'll be using Simplified 3D and it's multiple processes to change settings mid print for maximum efficiency. If you don't have that program, not to worry. All of the G code from this video is going to be uploaded to Thingiverse with a link in the description so you can print these at home on your Ender 3. No matter what slicer you're using, all of these settings will apply to you. So I'll post up what it's called in each of the most popular slicers as we go along. The first thing we do is put down a baseline. So I found this gem on Thingiverse, it aims to test many, many things. You can see in the pictures there what the things are it's trying to test are explained and it's worth having a look at that after you follow the link. This is a relatively fast and light on plastic print which is also a bonus. Here's my one printed and it looks pretty good, that's because I've been developing this profile for quite a while now since I've had the printer. You can see the overhangs are quite good up until about 60-70 degrees. If we come down to the base, we can see we don't have any stringing in between these small towers. The pyramids are pretty nicely formed, the text is all clear, the circles are round, and all of the bridging tests have passed as well. So I'm only going to make minor improvements from this profile from here on in, but that's what we're going to try and do. You can also see with the text there's very little ghosting or ringing. At the end, after tweaking our slicer settings, we're going to print another one so we can compare our before and after. Make sure that you've got the same filament each time to make the comparison fair. So the first and most sensible thing to do is to do some basic calibration of our extruder and we're going to start with the steps per millimetre or E-steps. We're going to grab a ruler and we're going to measure out 120 millimetres on the filament where the filament enters the extruder. And then we're going to connect to the printer via USB. I'm using Octoprint. You can also use Repetia Hose, Printerface, Simplify 3D. We're going to enter G1, E100, F100 to slowly extrude 100 millimeters of filament. Now the filament will agonizingly slowly disappear inside the extruder. And after that's done, we're going to break out our ruler again and measure how much is remaining from the entry of the extruder to our dot. And mine was 18 millimeters. This means we're over extruded by two millimeters. To fix this, we're going to retrieve our E-steps by entering M503. And then we're going to look for the spiel that starts with M92. You can see here mine is E93 or 93 steps per millimeter for the extruder. Time for some maths and we start with our desired distance 100 divided by our measured distance times the current E-steps. For me that's 100 divided by 102 times 93 for a new value of 91.18. Back in the terminal we enter M92E and then our number for me 91.18 and then to save this permanently we enter M500 to save to EEPROM. Next we're going to calculate our extrusion multiplier or flow rate as it's known in other slices. We're going to start by importing a cube and the aim is to have one perimeter with zero infill and no top or bottom layers. In Simplify 3D we leave our extrusion multiplier at 1 and we can see our target extrusion width is 0.48 millimeters. In Cura we need to manually set our wall thickness to something like 0.5 and the value we'll be changing is the flow which should be set to 100. In Slicer it's called extrusion multiplier, it should be set to 1 under filament settings. And under our print settings, we need to set a default extrusion width of 0.5 or similar. So we print out our calibration cube with single wall and you don't need to print it the whole way up to take a good measurement. My target was 0.48, but I measured 0.52, so here's the maths. We once again have our desired wall thickness, we divide it by what we measured and then we times it by our old extrusion multiplier to get our new one. For me that was 0.48 divided by 0.52 times 100 and I rounded it up to 93 and that ended up being spot on. It's hard to get it perfect but after reprinting I was very close to 0.48 on each side. You can also measure and input your filament diameter but my X3D sponsored filament is exactly 1.75 and so there's no need for me. Next up, we're going to complete this temperature test and this is particularly handy if you've got a new type of filament, you want to know the best temperature to print it at for strength versus aesthetics. Here's the file we're using from Thingiverse. I like it because it's got bridging and it goes all the way from 240 to 190. 
So setting up for our heat test is gonna be quite straightforward. We don't need to use any of the special processes. All we need to know is that every five mils, we have a different temperature change. So we're gonna to come to our settings and then come to temperature. So on layer one, we're gonna set our highest temperature of 240 and that matches what we have written down here. And then we're going to add a set point. And for this layer, we're gonna make it layer 26 because at five millimeters thick and 0.2 layers, that's how many it's gonna be before the next one. 235 and then repeat. So here's all of our changes. We can see it's going down in five degree steps. So we're gonna hit okay. We slice the model and we're ready to go. It's going to change every 25 layers, which is five millimeters, and we're gonna have our desired effect. You can see here with the Z height in between five and 10, we have our desired temperature of 235, so it's working perfectly. My temperature test had very little difference between the different temperatures, so I'm gonna keep it at 210 degrees like I already had before. Here it is up close, and as you can see, it's pretty much the same the whole way up and down. I guess this filament is quite tolerant to different temperatures. You can see that there's very little change in layer quality and in the bridging next to it as well. Even the fine details on the back don't really have any changes. So as I said, I'm gonna leave my filament temperature at 210 for PLA. Next, we're gonna test speed. And basically we're gonna up the speed every five millimeters by 10 millimeters per second and see if we have any trade-off in quality. So for this one, we're going to get a little bit more advanced and we're gonna use the multiple processes that Simplify 3D offers. We're gonna start by coming to our process and for the layer, we are going to set that we have no top or bottom. We want it to be completely hollow. I'm gonna go for three shells. I'm gonna put down the infill to zero. If we hit okay and do a little preview, we can see that we're gonna get the desired geometry. We can see that this shape is 30 millimeters high. We're gonna divide it up into five millimeter segments once again. I'm gonna start by coming back to speed and setting our base speed. I'm gonna go for 3000, which is 30 millimeters per second. I'm then gonna to come to advanced and click start and end printing height. So we're gonna go from zero to five for this one. Then we're gonna add a new process. It will copy the previous one. So once again, we're gonna to come to speed and we're gonna up that. Come to advanced and then update these two. So it's gonna go from five to 10 and it's gonna repeat for every five millimeters up. All right, that's our last one. So the 30 millimeter object is divided into six five millimeter segments. The speed goes up each time, starting with 30 millimeters per second all the way up to 100 millimeters per second at the top. When we prepare to print, we then have all of our processes selected. We need to go select all, so they're all included, and then OK. And everything will be compiled one on top of each other, ready to print. If you watch closely while it's printing, the speed is going to increase every five millimeters in vertical height. Now mine looks pretty good across the board. In fact, it's pretty hard to tell where the speed has gone up. Therefore, I've upped my baseline speed to the second highest value, and that's gonna save me a lot of time in future. Under the close-up camera, everything is verified. There's very little change from bottom to top, and therefore the printer can go a fair bit faster before anything is affected negatively. Next up, we're gonna tune our attraction, and I have to say this was the most interesting test and probably the most useful, particularly on a printer like the Ender 3 with a Bowden tube setup. Here's the model I've chosen. It's really simple. That's all we need for this retraction test. So for this retraction one, it's much the same story. I noted that it's 32 millimeters high, and it's a two millimeter base. So all I did was come to my processes, if I turned off wipe nozzle, I left coasted end on 0.4 millimeters, and then every five millimeters, I change the retraction distance. So we start at zero, which means retraction off, then two, four, six, eight at the highest one up. So if you are following along and Cura is your slicer of choice, just a reminder that you need to come up to settings and configure setting visibility. Anything that you're looking for that doesn't show up, so for instance, retraction distance, that wasn't showing up before. So I would type it into the top and then tick it to bring it up and then you can enter the value that you want. Now, as I said, my results were particularly interesting. Previously, I was printing with a retraction of eight because I copied that from the Cura profile that came with the printer, but clearly my results indicate that my best retraction is four millimeters. So that's what I've put it to from now on. So from the bottom, we have zero retraction, two mils, four mils, six mils, eight mils, and clearly the four millimeter one is the one that I need. There's a refreshing lack of surface imperfections all around this. I'm gonna keep these settings. 
The other thing I noticed is that turning off wiping the nozzle seemed to have a good effect on my prints. There's no longer any puck marks on the surface where the extrusion starts and stops. Now that we've tweaked all these other settings, it's time to print a second one of these. And I have to say mine are quite similar. There was very little difference between them, but one good thing was with my increased speed, one was printed in one hour instead of one hour and a half for the same quality. So this whole exercise was worthwhile for that reason alone. So hopefully this gives you a good idea on how to tune the fundamentals of your slicing software. If you have an Ender 3 or anything similar, you should be pretty safe to run the G code. I've got two versions, one with G29 inserted for auto bed leveling and one with out. So pick the appropriate one from the Thingiverse link. If you're having a problem for something I haven't covered here, check out this awesome guide from Simplify 3D to help you troubleshoot and what to change in your slicer settings, some common 3D printer problems. That's going to wrap it up for this video. I encourage you to experiment as much as possible and learn as much as you can about different slicer settings. Remember that you might need to do it for different materials, even the same type of material from a different brand because the properties will differ for each one. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.